So today I'm gonna to show you my editing workflow in Lightroom and Photoshop. So I have this Fujifilm RAW file that I captured out on the Oregon coast during a beautiful sunset. And as you can see, the photo definitely needs some work. Now, as I go through my edits today, keep in mind that there's not really a right way or a wrong way to edit photos. There's often multiple ways to achieve similar results when post-processing images. And of course, there's a bunch of different photo editing programs out there. I'm just gonna be showing you my own current workflow that I've refined over the years. For me, this workflow, it's fast, it's effective, and it gives me results that I'm happy with. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll learn a thing or two, or you'll get some ideas for your own editing process. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I'm gonna do is change the camera profile. So it's currently set to Adobe Color, but I wanna use one of the Fujifilm film simulations. So I'm just gonna click here, open up camera matching, and I can just hover over these film simulations and find one that I like. Now, most of the time I'll use a standard profile unless I'm going for a certain look. So for this image, I'll go with Provia, which is Fujifilm's standard profile. I'm also noticing that the horizon isn't level, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I remember when taking this shot that I was moving around quite a bit taking different photos, and I didn't take the time to level properly. But anyways, I can just click on the crop tool here and then the straighten tool. And then I can just draw a straight line along the horizon. Something like that looks good. Now the image is darker than I want because I exposed for the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the exposure a bit. I'm gonna also lift the shadows and I'll raise up the blacks a bit as well. And then I wanna take the highlights back down to bring back some of the sky. I'm also gonna boost the color slightly using the vibrance and saturation sliders. Now I don't wanna go overboard with it, so maybe just around plus 10 for both. I'm also gonna go down to the calibration panel and I'll boost the color here. Oftentimes bringing up the saturation of the blue channel can give images a nice color enhancement without going overboard with it. So I'll go ahead and drag the blue channel saturation up. Yeah, about plus 50 looks nice to me in the sky and in the rocks. Not really liking what it did to the water in the foreground though. So I'm gonna go up to the color mixer and bring down the blue saturation to remove that extra blue in the water. That looks better. The next thing I want to do is take a look at the detail and see if it needs some sharpening. So I'm just going to go ahead zoom into 100% on these razor clams here. And I'm going to click on raw details. It's improved it a bit, but I want to go ahead and increase the detail some as well and see how that looks. Yeah, I like it. I'll also drag up the sharpening slightly. Something like that. And then I'm gonna hold the Option key while dragging up the masking slider so that the sharpening is mainly applied to the areas with more uh, well-defined edges. There we go. That looks good to me. So I think that's about the extent of the raw edits that I wanna do before we jump into Photoshop and really bring the image to life. But let's first do a quick before after so we can see the changes we made. Here's before and after, before, after. It's a pretty big difference already. Okay, so let's take this image into Photoshop now. So I'm gonna right click on the image, go to edit in, and then I'm gonna open as a smart object in Photoshop. By opening as a smart object, I'll be able to modify these raw adjustments again if I need to. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Now, one thing I wanna do just for the sake of this video is I'm gonna create a copy of this smart object and drag it to the bottom. And then I'm gonna double click on it to open up Camera Raw. This has all of our adjustments that we just made in Lightroom. But what I wanna do is just reset everything so that we have a final comparison once we're done editing. So I'm just gonna hit OK. And then I'll turn the visibility off for this layer. And let's go ahead and rename it to raw file. 
All right, so the first thing I like to do after making raw adjustments is to test out different auto curves algorithms and see if I want to use any of them. You know, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to use my auto curves action here for that. Now, before I do that, I do want to point out that I created all these actions you see here uh, in order to speed up and simplify my workflow. And there's another video on my channel where I go through them all. Uh, I will briefly go over them today as I use them. Uh, but if you want a complete overview, you can check out the video called Photoshop Actions I Use All the Time. And uh, if you're interested in getting these actions for yourself, I'll leave a link in the video description. All right, so if I click on the auto curves action, you can see I now have four separate layers. Each one of these layers is a different auto curve. And I'm just gonna cycle through these and see if any of them will be useful. And I kind of like the color in the second one here, but it's way too strong. So I'm going to bring down the opacity quite a bit. Maybe around 15%. Just give the image a slight color shift. I think it complements the sunset colors nicely. So then I'll just select the auto curves layers that I'm not going to use and press delete to get rid of them. Another thing I want to do is brighten up the darkest areas in the photo as I feel they're still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to use this action here called curves with dark mask to create a new curves layer with a luminosity mask that is targeting those darker tones of the image. So I'll go ahead and run the action. And now we have that new layer. And if I hold option and then click on the mask, you can see what the mask currently looks like. Now remember that for layer masks, parts that are white will show the layer, parts that are black will hide the layer, and then shades of gray will show the layer at different opacities. So this mask isn't quite where I need it yet, but if I hit Command plus M while the mask is selected, we'll get a curves adjustment we can use to modify the mask itself. And I'm gonna adjust this curve to where we are really only targeting those darkest areas of the image. I'll hit OK. Now I don't want to target the water or the C stack in the back, so I'm just going to hit B to select the brush tool. I'll make sure the color is black. And I'm just going to paint away the areas that I don't want to impact. Something like that looks good. I'll go ahead and click off the mask. And now I can make an adjustment with the curve that will only impact those darkest areas while leaving the brighter areas untouched. The next adjustment I wanna make is adding contrast. And I wanna target that contrast towards the midtones and keep the brightest and darkest areas of the image relatively untouched. So to do that, I'm gonna use this curves with midtone action. I'll go ahead and run it. So this creates a new curves layer with a midtone luminosity mask. And all I'm going to do is create a pretty big S curve to add some contrast. Now, if I was to shift plus click on the mask in order to disable it, you can see how bad the image looks now. But by using the mask, we get a nice bit of punch to the image. I'll go ahead and modify the mask further to make it less restrictive, which in turn will add more contrast since it's expanding the tones that it's targeting. To do that, I'll just click on the mask to select it then hit Command plus M on the keyboard to open up a curves adjustment that will modify the mask. And I'll just bring up the curve. And you can see that it adds even more pop to the image. Now, if I feel like I've gone too far, I can modify the curve some more or I can reduce the opacity of the layer. I think this looks good right about here. So next I want to add more pop to the water flow in the foreground as it looks pretty flat at the moment. So for this adjustment, I'm going to use some dodging along with a luminosity mask. So I'm just going to run this action here called dodge with light mask. And we now have this new layer with a blend mode of soft light. The brush tool is selected and the color is set to white. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hold option plus click on the mask to select and view it. Since I'm going to be targeting the water in the foreground, 
I'll need to modify this mask. So I'm going to hit Command plus M to bring up a curve adjustment. And then I'll select this option right here so that I can use the image to modify the curve. Then I can just click and drag on the image to lift up the area that I want to target. After that, I can go back to the curve and then drag down on a new point below the point that we just added. So the whole point of this is to get the water flow to be close to white and then the area around it to be closer to black so that, so that I can just target the water. And now that I have the mask I want, I'll go ahead and click off the mask. And now I can do some dodging on the water using the brush. Now currently the opacity of the brush is at 100%. So the effect is quite strong. If I want to make the effect more subtle, I could use either a lower opacity brush or I could just lower the opacity of the layer. That looks pretty good. Now some of the water is brighter than other spots of the water. So if I want to balance that brightness a little bit, I can select the mask, make sure the brush is black, lower the brush opacity to 10% or so, and then just brush on the area that I want to reduce in brightness. So next I want to dodge some other areas of the image. I'm going to go ahead and run the dodge with light mask action again to create a new dodge layer with the luminosity mask attached. I'll go ahead and option click on the mask to select it and hit command plus M to open a curves adjustment for the mask. Click on this tool once again and then drag up on the image on the area that I'm targeting. Then go back to the curve and add in some contrast with another point. Click OK. Click off the mask. Now for this area I don't want to dodge with a white brush. I'm going to go ahead and sample the color by holding option and clicking. I'm then going to select a brighter version of that color in the color panel and I'll use that color to dodge. My brush is at 20% opacity currently. I'm gonna change it to 100% so you can see the effect more. And I'll just paint on the areas that I wanna dodge. The effect is too strong, so I'll lower the opacity of this layer. Something like this. I also want to dodge some other areas, so I'll just do the same thing where I sample the color of the area that I want to dodge, then take a brighter version of that color, and then use the brush to brighten the area. I'll go ahead and do this area back here. And we'll dodge this area as well. And we'll do a little bit right here. So next there's a couple things that I want to remove from the image. There's this little piece of rock sticking out up top that's a bit of a distraction in my opinion. Though it's not like the worst thing in the world or anything. Uh, and then at the bottom part of the image my tripod is actually in the frame a little bit. So I want to remove that as well. And I'm going to click on this action here called clean up. All it does is creates a new layer and then selects the spot healing brush. I'm going to actually select the remove tool though as it'll do a better job removing these objects for this image. And all I have to do is paint over the objects. And then click the check mark here. And Photoshop does its thing. It definitely does a pretty good job. At this point I'm ready for a few final steps. So I typically like adding some glow and sharpening to my images at the end of my workflow, but the amount that I add really depends on what the final output of the image is going to be. So am I making a print? Is the image going online? If so, which platform? You know, different size images work better for different platforms. Uh, so what I will generally do is I'll save the image at full resolution and then I can take that full res image, make a copy of it and then resize it for print or for online or for whatever. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna resize the image to where it fits the screen at 100% resolution. 
So I'll go ahead and resize it to 34%. Next I'm going to run this action called glow and that'll give the image a nice glow effect. Now when I run the action there's an all white layer mask so nothing's being masked out and the entire image is getting that glow effect. But what I want to do is really only apply that effect to the brighter tones in the image. So I'm going to run this action here to replace the white layer mask with a luminosity mask that targets those brighter tones. And now the effect is much more subtle. Now the glow effect is brightening the sky more than I want for this particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and run this action here called curves with a sky mask. And it just creates a curves layer with everything masked out except for the sky. I'm then going to clip it to the glow layer so that it only impacts the glow layer and not the entire image. To do that I can just hold option and then click between the two layers and you can see we get that little arrow here indicating that the curves layer is clipped to the glow layer. I will generally add sharpening to images at the end of my workflow as well. I'll go ahead and click the sharpen action here and it adds way more sharpening than we need. So I'll just lower the opacity of this layer quite a bit. Something like this looks fine to me. And as a final touch, I'll go ahead and run the burn action. And with a low opacity brush, I'll manually paint in a vignette and that'll help draw the viewer's eyes into the frame and away from the edges. So before we look back at the raw file and compare the before and after edits, I just want to remind you that the Photoshop actions that I use today are available to download if you're interested in getting them for yourself. I'll leave a link in the video description. And I also have a Sandmark discount code in the video description as well if you're interested in that. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll take a look back at the raw file. So here's before the edits. And after. Before after. Alright, let me know in the comments what you think, and that's it for now. I'll see you next time.